Hey Reefers, welcome back to another video from Reef Drama. Today we're going to have a look at my top 10 invertebrates. So hopefully you're going to find something of interest in there. Maybe it's something that you've already got. Maybe it's something that you actually want to get hold of. Uh, and this will give you a bit more information. Uh, you'll be able to pause the video as well at certain points where I've put a write-up uh, of each of the different uh, invertebrates that are on the video. So sit back, enjoy the video, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Number 10 spot. The bubble tip anemone is the most popular anemone among the saltwater enthusiasts, most likely because of the symbiotic relationship they have with clownfish, but also because of the spectacular coloration you can find. In the wild, the bubble tip is found throughout the tropical waters of the Indian Ocean, Fiji, Tonga, and the Red Sea, generally attached to coral rubble or in the crevices of solid reefs within 40 meter depth ranges. Adults are solitary and occur in deeper waters. Juveniles occur in groups or colonies nearer to the surface under bright sunlight with gentle water movement. Number nine spot. The sexy anemone shrimp is named for its unusual body movements. When walking, it sways its abdomen back and forth with exotic flair. In addition to this fascinating behaviour, the sexy anemone shrimp is also uniquely dressed in a reddish-brown body dotted with brilliant white spots. These characteristics make the sexy anemone shrimp an enchanting aquarium addition. Native to the reefs of the Indo-Pacific, this sexy shrimp is usually found amongst the tentacles of an anemone. In the home aquarium, however, the sexy anemone shrimp is often found perched on a coral frag or outcropping from live rock. Number 8 spot. The feather duster worm is often found in subtidal zones of reefs around the world. Positioned in moderate currents, where plankton meals get brought to them each day that are gentle enough not to damage their feathery crown. It's the feathery crown that gives the feather duster its name and its specialised part of its body that is used to trap the plankton and move it to its mouth. These fan worms don't have a face or eyes, but they are able to detect changes in light and use that light sensitivity to protect them from their predators. If it detects a shadow or feels threatened, it will retract into its tube for protection. Number 7 spot. The dwarf blue-legged hermit crab, certainly one of the most abundant and widespread small hermit crab species throughout the Caribbean Sea and Western Atlantic. There are around 500 known species of the hermit crab and the blue-legged hermit crab is one of them. It's a small crab, large males can barely reach one inch long and as the name implies, they have blue legs. They have both claws, equal, unlike most species of hermit crab. That's why they're sometimes referred to as the equal-handed hermit crab. These crabs also have bright orange antennae that make them look even more flashier. Number six spot. The Mexican turbo snail is extremely popular among reef hobbyists as it quickly eliminates large amounts of nuisance algae. It's particularly fond of the hair algae and will consume mass quantities of it and other algae off your live rock and aquarium glass. Also known as the turban or the top shell snail, the turbo snail is native to the Gulf of California off the coast of Mexico. These snails have the ability to rewrite themselves, which is pretty handy when they fall off the glass and you don't have to stick your hand in and rewrite them as you would have with other snails. Number five spot. The short spine purple pin urchin. If you're looking for a striking and easy to care addition for your cleanup crew, then the purple short spine pin cushion urchin will scavenge over rock and substrate for bits of food and algae to eat while adding interest to your home aquarium. These pincushion urchins have oval or round bodies covered with hundreds of uniform spines. Though the spines are short, they are still sharp and can punch your skin. During the day, it will hide among the rocks, in crevices or under sandy substrate. Number 4 spot. The strawberry conch is a fascinating creature. They actually filter through the substrate with their proboscis and they feed on the algae and detritus. Strawberry conches are omnivores, so they enjoy finding all the tasty algae that they can, as well as some meaty foods. Their eyesight is astonishingly advanced. Their eyes are well developed and can watch any action happening all around them. They also have a beautiful white, brown and orange motted shell. The strawberry part comes from the coloured interior with a black inner lip. Number 3 spot. The Sally Lightfoot crab is sometimes called the Red Rock Crab. The origin of the Sally Lightfoot crab's name is still debated. 
Some people say that the Sally Lightfoot crab was named after a Caribbean dancer. Of course, it could just be the fact that it's light on its feet and it's called Sally. Who knows? Because of their pointed legs, they don't really have feet. The Sally Lightfoot crabs can get an amazing hold on lava rocks. They will stick their tips of their legs into tiny holes in the lava and hold on tight. This way they can avoid falling off even when powerful waves wash over them. Number 2 spot The emerald crab is well respected for its scavenging ability. It will enthusiastically feed on uneaten meaty foods and many types of nuisance algae. Unlike many other animals it will eat the bubble algae and helps clean your aquarium of this algae. Its distinct flat shiny green body and hairy legs easily identify it as the emerald crab. Native to the reefs of the Caribbean, the emerald crab is nocturnal and hides in caves and amongst rubble during the day. This crab will require an established home aquarium with plenty of rock work and hiding places. And number one spot. The cleaner shrimp, the hardiest and most popular saltwater aquarium shrimp going. These shrimp usually eat meaty marine foods. From their cleaning activities and behaviours, they benefit from the addition of parasites, skin and mucus to their diets. There's also no guarantee of a good fit between the shrimp and the fish in your tank. Saltwater cleaner shrimp are also sometimes specific, quite picky about the fish species they will clean and some fish are reluctant to receive cleaning services from a resident shrimp. Amazingly, my cleaner shrimp clean my porcupine puffer fish, and there's a video actually of that on my channel. Is it good?